Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons is offering a slew of new dragons to pit heroes against. The book also offers players new dragon-inspired races and subclasses to create a draconic-powered hero. In this video, I will be discussing the Way of the Ascendant Dragon Monk, a subclass that has a hero harness their key to achieve powerful draconic feats. I will be taking a look at the subclass's key features, offer some ideas on how to reflavor the subclass, and provide some ways you can play the Way of Ascendant Dragon Monk in the official 5th edition settings. Hello, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, a channel bringing you player-focused discussions and character guides for 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. My name is Josh, thank you for watching. The Way of the Ascendant Dragon Monk received a significant amount of changes in its official printing compared to when it first appeared in public playtesting. Draconic Discipline had a quality of life change that is in line with the design approach spinning out of Tasha's. Players will be able to speak, read, and write Draconic with this feature, but now if they can already speak Draconic, they are able to choose another language instead. Other than this small change, the other traits remain the same. Whenever we damage a creature with an unarmed strike, we can change the damage type to Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Poison. Also, if we fail an Intimidation or Persuasion check, we can use our reaction to reroll the check. After we use this ability, we can't use it again until we finish a long rest. Breath of the Dragon is the bread and butter feature for this subclass and is mechanically identical to its playtest version, but there is a slight change to its key usage. Whenever we take the attack action, we can replace one of our attacks with a breath weapon. We have the choice to make it a 20 foot cone or a 30 foot line that's 5 foot wide, as well as decide its damage type, choosing from acid, cold, fire, lightning, and poison. Those caught in the breath weapon must make a dexterity saving throw, taking damage equal to 2 rolls of the martial arts die if they fail, and half as much if they succeed. At 11th level, the damage increases to 3 rolls of the martial arts die. Breath of the Dragon can be used a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus and regains all uses after a long rest. Just like the playtest version, we can still spend key on the feature if we no longer have any free uses, but the change in cost is detrimental. Instead of costing just one key, now it costs two. When receiving this feature at 3rd level, instead of potentially using this feature an additional 3 times with our key uses, we only get one extra use. Wings Unfurled grants a flight bonus when we activate Step of the Wind, granting us a flying speed equal to our walking speed until the end of our turn. We can use this feature a number of times equal to our proficiency bonus and regain all uses after a long rest, but in the playtest version, we were able to expend key points to continue to use this feature past our initial uses. Unfortunately, this has been removed. The last two features of the subclass had some major reworks to their mechanics. Aspect of the Worm was hit terribly with the nerf bat. As a bonus action, we can channel our key to unleash a draconic aura. In the UA, that aura had a range of 30 feet, but now it's shrunk to 10 feet. Also, instead of having access to all the abilities for the feature, we must choose between one of the two benefits when our aura is activated. We and allies in our aura gain resistance to one of the elemental damage types that we choose when we activate this aura, or we can choose to use Frightful Presence. As a bonus action, we can target an enemy in our aura and have them make a Wisdom saving throw. If they fail, they are frightened of us for one minute or until they pass a save at the end of their turns. This ability completely replaces a playtest trait that allowed us or our allies to use our reaction to return automatic damage back to an enemy that landed an attack on us. The only buff this feature received after using all our initial uses, instead of spending 4 key to use the feature again, in the official printing, we now only need to spend 3 key. Ascended Aspect was also hit with a nerf bat, altering every trait in the feature. We still receive Blind Sight, but instead of being able to see up to 30 feet, the range has been reduced to 10 feet. Augment Breath replaces the Damage Over Time inspired feature from the playtest version. We now can spend 1 key to increase the damage and range of our Breath of the Dragon feature. Spending the additional key now increases the ranges to a 60 foot cone or a 90 foot long line that is 5 foot wide. Those that fail the save take a total of 4 rolls of our martial arts die instead of 3, and if they succeed, they take half damage. Explosive Fury still triggers when we activate Aspect of the Worm, but the potential damage capability has been severely gutted. Those that are caught in the already small aura must make a dexterity saving throw. If they fail, they take 3d10 damage from our choice of acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison, instead of 4d10 in the playtest version. If they succeed the save, they take no damage. For those looking to change the flavor of the subclass, but still want to play up the draconic or elemental flavors, here are two ideas you can use. The first idea is to lean into the draconic flavor, but instead of basing the features on the chromatic and metallic dragons, we can take inspiration from the gem dragons. To make this subclass an ascendant gem dragon monk, we can change the pool of damage types we can choose from for many of the subclass features from the elemental damage types to the uncommon energy damage types. That means instead of acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison, we use force, necrotic, psychic, radiant, and thunder. 
Gem Dragons also have inherent psionic abilities. We can reflavor Wings Unfurled as an extension of this. Just like Gem Dragonborn's Gem Flight racial trait, when we activate Wings Unfurled, Spectral Gems appear and take the form of Wings being held in place with psionic power, allowing us to fly. The next idea steals the thunder from the Way of the Four Elements and turns the Way of the Ascended Dragon into a true Elemental Master. Draconic Discipline could instead be changed to Primordial Knowledge to reflect this character's knowledge and connection to the Elemental Forces. Instead of learning the Draconic Language, they learn Primordial. We can make a slight change to the pool of energy types that many of the features in the subclass draw from. Replace Acid and Poison Damage types from our available options with Bludgeoning and Thunder. Bludgeoning damage could reflect this monk's ability to manipulate the earth while thunder would show their mastery over air. When using Breath of the Dragon, this could be your character making an attack reinforced with elemental power. Obviously, this reflavor takes the idea from the Avatar franchise. Just how the Avatars have a state of higher power, Aspect of the Worm could be flavored to reflect that while Ascendant Aspect is the character's mastery over that state. Now let's take a look at some character ideas for the Way of the Ascendant Dragon Monk for each of the official 5th edition settings. In Forgotten Realms, we could be a member of the Cult of the Dragon, ordered by Archon the Cruel to find relics of power to bring Tiamat into the Material Plane. In Ebron, we could be a war veteran who has manifested an aberrant dragon mark. It is only through meditation and focus we are able to overcome the pain that the mark brings. In Ravenloft, we could be a member of a cult that serves a Dracolich, aiding our master to accumulate power and put others under their will. In Ravnica, we could be a swift blade for the Boros Legion, trained to wield the power of fire and lightning with our trusty blade to protect the citizens of Ravnica. In Theros, we could be an oracle for the God of the Storms, Kyranos. Traveling throughout Theros, we are guided by visions of a great calamity that threatens the plane and are tasked with preventing it. And finally, in Strixhaven, we could be a Prismari student who wields the elements through dance, looking to master their ability to bend the elements using performance art. Admittedly, I was initially disappointed with the changes made to the subclass, but not all the changes are as bad as they seem. The Way of the Ascendant Dragon is weaker compared to its playtest version, but it's still a viable subclass. While Breath of the Dragon's key change limits its overall use, we already get free uses tied to our proficiency bonus, making it not dependent on spending our key. Flurry of Blows and then later Stunning Strike are better investments for our key. The feature is meant to give monks a tool to combat multiple enemies at once in certain situations, but the damage is weaker compared to other breath attack abilities at third level. Wing Unfurled's nerf is perfectly fine. Just like Breath of the Dragon, the feature is not dependent on additional key usage. Removing the ability to spend key after we run out of our initial uses puts it in line with subclass features from other classes as most subclasses do not allow a player to spend a class resource to continue to use it after their initial use. The changes made to Aspect of the Worm on the other hand are disappointing. Having players choose one trait compared to having all traits and shrinking its aura does limit its overall use. Frightful Presence is a decent trait, but I feel it's an ability we receive a little late and competes with our bonus action usage. It's a support feature, lowering the accuracy and hindering the success against any saves the enemy can make, but unfortunately, many monsters, especially ones in the third tier of play, are outright immune to the condition. The aura's range may not seem like an issue, but it affects Ascendant Aspect. Ascendant Aspect ends up coming up short for our final feature. As I just mentioned, the smaller aura puts a limit on the potential damage output from Explosive Fury, which already had its damage reduced by a die size and became a save or suck ability. Blind Sight was reduced down to a 10 foot range, which puts it in line with the blind fighting fighting style for the fighter, but that's a first level ability. Augmented Breath is fine though. It replaces a bookkeeping trait to offer a burst damage option. Despite these changes, Breath of the Dragon and Wings Unfurled are the two main features a player will be utilizing and forming their builds around, and they remain intact not being dependent on key usage. Comparing the final version to its playtest counterpart, Unearth Arcana versions will always be more powerful compared to the final printing, which could lead to disappointment if expectations aren't tempered. The Way of the Ascendant Dragon Monk is still a viable subclass, letting players channel their inner dragon. With that said, I want to hear from you. What do you think of the way of the Ascendant Dragon Monk? Let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, I drop a video every week, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're looking to train your own dragon to take along on your adventures, check out my video on the Drake Warden Ranger. You can click on the thumbnail on the screen or a link for the video in the description below to check it out. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.